No real injuries to, to report of. Tajay, uh, his ankle, he's day to day. Uh, don't, we'll see on Wednesday, but as of right now, it doesn't uh, appear too serious. So we'll see how he feels this week and go from there during the practice week. Everything else was kind of normal bumps and bruises after a game, but uh, everybody else is in as good a health as you could ask for after a game. Kelly, you, you talked about Will yesterday. How do you try to coach a young quarterback through, you know, making some of the decisions that he's making under duress? Yeah, just keep coaching him. Um, you know, sometimes that one surprised me again. I, I just I thought we had coached that one, um, and then just to see his his instincts take over in that moment, and that to happen the way it did was. Um, obviously, clearly, I was pretty upset about it. I, you know, I still am. I mean, it's not something that I think is an acceptable way to play. Um, but I think on the flip side is that Will did have a much better game than last week. I thought a lot of things he did, uh, we saw improvement. Uh, that part was positive. Um, I coach Will hard, but you know, I do I do love him pretty hard too, and I think that that's okay. I think we can we can have those moments, and unfortunately. Uh, an intense moment got captured because I'm also the head coach, not just the offensive coordinator. And so uh, those those conversations don't always get caught on television. And, and it happens a lot, but it might happen to be in front of everybody. So uh, I don't regret it, um, but I, I, I do coach Will hard, and I think he's accepting of that coaching. And uh, I thought he did a lot of things a lot better. What um, did you like better? What were some things that he yeah, did? His footwork, his footwork was, was much better. He played on time better. Um, he was more accurate uh, than he was last week. He looked more settled in. He managed it better this week. I thought he was, you know, we tried to take some shots. I think we got to be better in protection to help him. Um, but I thought his, his performance was improved, and I think that's what we're after is, is sort of weekly improvement. Um, and I think if you take out that, that really silly mistake that he made and we get three points there, I think you leave that game, whether we win or lose, feeling like he's, he's made, a, made improvement. And regarding, I think that's what we're looking for. Excuse me. Regarding that mistake, he said he has to rewire his thought process. Do you think, like, getting to that point where you are a repeat offender like that, is that something like is that a habit that you have to break down and then reprogram? How do you approach that? Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how to approach that. Um, that's a that's a will thing. It seems like, um, like all we can do is keep pointing out the situation and what's how to play it, um, how to have awareness for it, and, and what to do with the football. And I think at the end of the day, for him, the biggest thing is just going to be protect our team, you know? And that's, that's part of his job as the quarterback is to protect our team, and that means protecting the football and not putting, our, not putting us in a bad spot um, on a decision that you'd make. And again, I think it's, 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 I need to differentiate, too, that there's differences between, like, throwing an interception, that, that happens. You can throw interceptions. You get sack fumbled sometimes. Those those are all part of playing quarterback in the NFL. Um, but it's sort of the unforced errors uh, that that have been made that are the ones that we can't have. Um, I'm never going to react that way to Will when he throws an interception. Never, because that's how it works. You know, there's there's days where you make good throws. There's days where DBs make good plays. That happens. Um, but but it's the unforced errors that I think are are things that he's got to do a better job of just understanding where we're at. We're in field goal range. It's a third down. The play's over. Like, you didn't get anything, it's over. Just protect the ball and let us kick the field goal and, and we'll be fine. And what, it's, that's OK. You What's your trust this? level with him right now in terms of those sorts of things? Uh, I, I mean, I still trust Will. And I think we still have to keep coaching it. And he's got to keep uh, responding to the coaching, which is what he's done since I've been here. And so that part, um, I have a lot of confidence and trust in. I think Will wants to be good. He wants to do the right things. And we just have to keep showing him uh, when and where to make those decisions. And um, I think he'll respond in turn. So that part, I don't feel, I don't have any reprehension about. I think he's done a good job with almost all of those things. Um, and again, just to, I thought we'd already gotten past the one and, and another one shows up. So again, we'll, we keep coaching, keep bringing up the situation and the awareness and, and his ability to know that, you know, our team ebbs and flows when with him. And when we make those mistakes, they're, they're killer. Um, and again, the, the, different, the difference is it's an unforced error that he can control and, and not necessarily, um, you know, just a, a good play by the defense or an aggressive throw that gets intercepted. I don't mind those things. It's the unforced ones that are, are maddening. The pressure rate that he's faced so far is the highest through two weeks in the league. How much of that do you see on tape being his own doing? And how much is that impacting his ability to play quarterback? Oh, well, the pressure impacts everything about playing quarterback. I mean, that's just what it is. Um, we, we've got to do a better job there. I got to do a better job of, of trying to help those guys as best I can uh, with the play calls and the situations we're in. Um, you know, end of the game when you know you got to throw it. I mean, here it comes, and that's just what it is. And you got to be able to handle that. Um, 
and, and we didn't do as good a job as I think we're capable of doing, and that's an area that has to improve. I think part of that um, affects the quarterback as well. I mean, there's, that's just it's all tied together. That's why uh, football's a great game is that you need everybody on offense doing their job um, and for everything to look the way it's supposed to, and, and it's hard to overcome it if, if every other play there's one person that doesn't do it the way that we're supposed to, and I think we have a lot of that right now that we have to keep hammering and keep fixing so uh, we can get all 11 guys doing, doing things consistently. What's a reasonable expectation for week-to-week -week improvement on offensive line pass protection? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's slow and steady sometimes, and uh, I know that's not the, a perfect answer, but um, I just I thought if you look at, at what JC did from week one to week two, and I thought if you look what Peter did to week one to week two, um, that, was, that was a pretty good jump. Those guys did a nice job, and they improved, and um, we got to do a better job on the, on the right side. That's where a lot of the pressure came in the game, but um, it's possible to improve at, at a good enough rate, but it's also not necessarily an, an overnight process. Um, so things things take time and they take experience and reps and that's where we're at. When Cheeto talked to us, he talked about not panicking, trusting the process. Mm -hmm. Is that where you are with your message to the football team? Absolutely. That's exactly what I said to the team last night after the, after the game. I believe, in, I believe in the players we have. I believe in the coaches we have. I believe in how we do things. I believe in how these guys work. Uh, I love our locker room. I really do. I think we got it. I think we have the makings, which is why I've been so confident in what I thought we could be. And it hasn't turned out that way early in the season, mainly because we've made too many mistakes um, to be anything other than Owen too. Um, but I believe in everything that we have here, and I believe in the players that we have. So I don't panic. We just keep pushing, and and we keep our blinders on, and you just keep worrying about getting better every day. And when you get to the end of the season, we'll see where the chips fall. But there's. You know, if you start trying to overreact to everything and, and make all these make changes and do all those things that um, that happen sometimes when you when you feel like things aren't going your way, I think you have to be mindful of the steadiness and not ride the roller coaster and the ups and downs. So we're going to continue on the way we do it. I believe in how we do things, um, and I think the results will, will will come. You've been preparing to be a head coach a long time. Is, is there any preparing for the emotions of, of a loss like like yesterday and being the guy? In charge? No, there's not. Um, and again, because you don't, you don't, you don't go into anything ever thinking about the worst, you know. And I, and, and not that things have been the worst, but we're zero two, and that's 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 a not a start that we had envisioned or anticipated. And, and, and we have to find a way to play better to not be zero and three. And so our our focus is going to be solely on trying to find a way to win the game this week. Um, but yeah, there's those aren't the things you 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 plan for as a head coach. Those things sometimes. Uh, happen and you just have to navigate your way through it. It doesn't mean to not be rash felt. with making decisions or changing anything, mm -hmm. but do you have to look long and hard at your punt protection at this point? What exactly happened yesterday? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I'm ultimately all those things uh, I'm in charge of, and um, we got to do a better job. I, I don't think I've ever seen back to back punts blocked, for, and both for you know different reasons. Um, but they're inexcusable and unacceptable, and, and that falls on me at the end of the day. And um, we got to find a way to not get another one blocked at any point the rest of this year. So uh, all of the things are on the table on how we view it and how we practice it, uh, how we work at it, what people we use, those things are all on the table because uh, we, we can't keep uh, hurting our team on special teams the way we have so far and um, have to find a way to help our team on special teams, and that's, that's what we're looking at. Did Julius seem wildly passionate about blocking his guy in that play to you? Uh, that's an interesting way to put it, Paul. Um, no, I think his, his release timing was early. You know, he ended up getting out early. He was trying to go cover um, and, and ultimately allowed a, allowed a wide rush lane for a, a rusher, and he came free. So we got to worry about blocking, the punt, blocking for the punter first before we worry about covering, and um, that's ultimately what happened in that spot. In both games, it's felt like um – the, the offensive line's kind of deteriorate, deteriorated down the stretch of the game. Do you think that's a fair evaluation and what goes into that? No, I don't think that's the case. Um, I think that we got into a couple of tough spots in the second half, a um, couple of third and longs. We had the one third down, that third and 10 that we threw, threw to Calvin that got dropped. Um, and then you get into a spot at the end of the game in two minute drill when uh, you know you got to throw it, and there's not really much balance to it, and um, you got to win those reps. And, and we didn't do a good enough job, I don't think. But I wouldn't say it deteriorated. I think we just didn't execute well enough overall. Um, got ourselves in a, in a third and long or two, which I think over the course of the game, 
early in the game, we did a really nice job. Uh, we were much improved on third down this week. I thought we were much more manageable for most of those drives. Um, didn't have as many third and longs. We were in third and six or less, a whole lot more. Um, that's an improvement. Uh, our percentages in converting was improved, um, but we had a couple spots in the second half that slowed us down. So I would, I would, I wouldn't necessarily attribute it to a deterioration of, of that. I think we, you know, got some some tough spots. Oh, I'm like, serious. Was Calvin open enough on first and goal that uh, a throw could have been made and put in there? Uh, yeah, you can always look back and and those plays in in the moment and and see guys that look open or could be open. Um, that's part of it. Uh, I think that uh, we had some opportunities down there at the end of the game, uh, which is all you can ask for uh, when you're down there with a couple shots left to try to go tie it. Um, and I think we didn't do a great job holding up in protection long enough. I think we needed another second on some of those. Um, but I thought we had we had chances, um, and for a variety of reasons, you know, we didn't we didn't end up coming up with the required touchdown to tie the game. That video you mentioned earlier about uh, kind of your reaction to, to Will's fumble mm -hmm. obviously drew a lot of attention. Yeah. Do, you, do you think there's some adjustment period for you maybe being a head coach now and knowing that the camera is going to be on you a lot more? And does that? Yeah, that's know, fair. That's a fair point. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I'm i generally pretty composed. I think you guys have seen that for the most part. Um, you know, that one just, that one set me off. Um, and I'm, I'm human like everybody else. I, I have blackout moments where I'll lose my mind. Um, I try not to. I try my best to keep it together. Um, but that one was that one was hard for me to watch in the moment. And yeah, I got to have a little bit better awareness that there's cameras on me. And and you know, I'm not I'm not up in the box yelling at anybody. I'm I'm right there in the front of everything, and the cameras are pointed right at me. So um, probably a little bit of a lesson learned for me in that regard. Um, don't regret my feelings about it, but but yeah, I'm sure there's a there's some things I could probably do better when it comes to that. Uh, why, why why do you need to be different there? What's wrong with that? You're, you're being human in the moment. Everyone's thinking that. Sure. What's wrong with it? Uh, I don't think anything's wrong with it. I just I, I don't want to get to points where like I, I stand up a player on television and I make it I make it about about them and and not about us. And I think those things. Um, I could do a better job with that. Uh, I'm not going to promise you that I'm going to be able to every time. Um, I do, I do. I am emotional enough at times, especially on game day, where you know when things go wrong, you get either excited or you get angry, and and that's how that's how it happens. But um, you know, I don't I don't want to do that to Will. That's not fair to Will in that in that particular case. Um, so yeah, I don't. I just it's not how I want to be perceived and considered. I think outside of this, you know, I think people that don't know me, and that's the only thing they see is that. Um, so yeah, that's probably the best way to put it. I don't, I don't regret my feelings about it um, and how I felt in the moment. I just think I can do a better job. Just like I ask our players to control their emotions, I probably should control mine a little bit. Or, have you or just, talked about that moment since, or is that just something that's talked about in these rooms on social media? Uh, I mean, I, th I think, no, I mean, we, there's not. I, I told them right before the next series, hey man, I love you. I'm not bad at you, we'll just keep moving. And so, uh, yeah, it's just, I think it's a natural flow of, of, of an NFL game. and. Um, again, it got caught on camera because you know I'm in, I'm in charge of the offense and the football team, and so that I'm much more visible than than your average offensive coordinator might be. So those conversations happen all the time. Those things get said all the time. I'm not. It's probably not unique, um, but I just uh, as the head coach, not the offensive coordinator in that moment. Um, yeah, those things are pretty normal. Ernest Jones, Ernest obviously played a lot more yesterday. How'd you, how'd you like what you saw from him and how he impacted the defense? Yeah, he's getting more and more comfortable and and understanding the scheme more and and, and really doing a nice job. He's shown up for us. He's been a really. It's why we traded for him. You know, as, as we thought he was a guy that could be impactful for us in the middle linebacker spot between him and um, Kenneth, and those guys have played uh, really good football. The two of them and. Having having Ernest be able to get more and more comfortable, I think you're starting to see his play speed and his ability to read, diagnose, and react to what's happening and make plays have uh, have helped us, and and I think it's going to continue to help us as the season goes on. So I'm I'm really happy that we have him. How much more frustrating, or does it make it more frustrating to have the loss be like basically the same movie you watched last week? You know, the block punt, carelessness with the football, no turnovers, yeah, control of, of the the game for the most part. Mm -hmm. How much more frustrating? Is it? Uh, it's it's the same amount of frustration I think, but um, for us right now, we we've got to find uh, find ways to eliminate some of the errors that are that are hurting our chances to win the game. Because I think we have a good football team. I think we can be competitive, and we've been competitive. But I think we can. It's more than being competitive. We're trying to win, and um, we've been in position to to win both of these games. 
and ultimately our our own errors have put us uh, at a detriment and we haven't been able to win because of that and so we have to clean up those things we have to do um, do what's what's required on each play um, and sometimes that's all you need to do and it's take care of the football find a way to get a turnover or two on defense um, and not get punts blocked and I think that we're going to be in a much better place I'd like to see what a game would look like when we don't turn the ball over uh, and what what we would look like and I think we would look pretty good to be honest and so uh, we just got to keep hammering those points home and keep keep detailing our fundamentals um, and be good at the basics. You know, there's, there's video, I'm sorry, there was another video clip kind of making on us about Traylon Burks and that the, the catch that he wasn't able to come up with, and it sort of talked about how maybe he didn't high point the ball well enough and, and didn't use his size well enough. I was curious to get your reaction to that and uh, if, you, if you thought that was on target. Yeah, I thought I thought the ball was. Um, probably in a spot where he couldn't go all the way up to go get it. It was, it was, he had to go turn back. And as he turned back, the defender was running through him. Um, and so he put himself up where he could go get the ball as the defender was playing through his body. Um, and they end up coming to the ground. And I've seen this happen before. It's not a, it's, it's pretty, pretty normal. It's just how do you secure the ball as you come to the ground? And really what happened is the, he sort of got lucky, the defender, as he got his arms stuck in between and they went to the ground, Traylon went down backwards, he went down on top, and he just rolled over with the ball in his hands. A um, little bit of a fluky play to some degree. Uh, would love to see Trey make that play, come down with it, just secure it, hold it, and trap his arm in there with it if he had to. Um, but, but ultimately, it, it didn't work that way. Again, I thought it was a good aggressive throw, put it up in a spot where we could go get it, and, uh, and I thought we were close to getting it. And, uh, though that was one where I, they, they got up and I thought we caught it. Um, I didn't realize that, that they had pulled the ball off. So um, kind of disappointing in that regard, but I wouldn't say it was really a fault of anybody. It's just how the, how the ball landed on the body. How's a 179-pound guy stealing it from a 225-pound guy? It really wasn't. It, he didn't really steal it from him. It was more as they came down and he hit the ground. He was already on top, and he just sort of rolled over with the ball. Um, it wasn't. It, who's, who's he there? Burks? The defender, Eccles, I think it was. Yeah. Um, as he landed down on top of him, the ball just sort of was in his – it was just right there, and as he rolled over, it just happened to be in his hand. So, um, yeah, I'd like to see us make that play and take that ball away, and uh, we didn't. Potentially you're seeing Malik on Sunday, he obviously knows you guys, you know mm -hmm. him. What, what, what are the kind of the dynamics when that happens when you know each other so well? Um. I think there's there's probably a small advantage in him knowing enough about our our people and um, our scheme and all those things. Um, obviously, played against our defense for an entire training camp and off season, so um, there's some things that he probably knows that the average player coming to play wouldn't. Um, so there's probably a small informational advantage there. Uh, he knows the the personnel, which is always good for a quarterback to have some familiarity. Um, but but I'm I'm truth I'm I'm proud of Malik. I'm happy for him that that he. Found a way to go in there and win that game. It's that was really cool to see for him, and and he's uh, did a nice job for him. And and we're gonna have our, our work cut out for us. They ran the ball like crazy. Um, they did a great job. Um, Malik did a really nice job of taking care of the football and, and giving them a chance to win the football game. So um, excited for Malik, and and hopefully that that we we play better than they do on Sunday. Comparing Will's passing chart uh, from the two games this year to mm -hmm. last year, the amount of him pushing the ball downfield is down pretty significantly, but then you look comparing him this year to the rest of the league, his ADOT's still really high, like top five. Mm -hmm. So two things. One, how much of that is your scheme not wanting or not needing to push the ball downfield nearly as much, and how much of that is the, the increase in the too high safety rate we've seen across the league this year? Yeah, it's a combination, certainly. Uh, I, we tried to push the ball a, a handful of times in this game for sure. Um, and the way that I talk to Will about it is I'm going to call play action shots, and if we don't have one, then you just check it down. Uh, and I'll call another one. And we did that quite a few times, and we ended up with, you know, a handful of checkdowns. And it wasn't for the lack of trying to push the ball down the field. They just do a good job, or, or the rush gets there quick, and he's just getting the ball out of his hands and playing playing football the way that he needs to. Um, that part was encouraging. He did a really nice job of managing that part of the play action game and, and the deep ball game. Um, I tried to stay as aggressive as I could. We took shots down the field. I called shots down the field, and um, sometimes they don't go there, uh, and sometimes they do. So. I don't think it is uh, – I think it's hard to compare. Um, and, I, and I think that we're going to still be an aggressive style offense. I still want the ball down the field. Will does that well. Uh, but 
you know, I think two games in is a kind of been a mixed bag. There's been some good, some bad, and um, some throws down the field we need to make, and maybe I need to call a few more. How much did they cover DeAndre well? How much did you maybe not dial him up? How much did Will maybe miss him? How much is his knee a factor in this? Uh, he's coming along. I'm, I think Hop will, Hop will be good. I, I've, I called a handful of plays with him as the primary, and um, the ball didn't go to him on those couple ones. They did a nice job on a particular play of, of passing off the route. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep – I got to do a better job of getting him involved. Um, I got a better job of getting him targets. Uh, so that's really where we're at. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to know him still. Obviously, he missed training camp. And so uh, I'm trying to make sure that, that I put him in the spots that he's going to be best for and, and we'll keep working through that. But I got to do a better job of, of getting him involved earlier and more often. So uh, that's ultimately on me. Calvin had a good game yesterday, and obviously I'm sure you'd love to hit all the shots to mm -hmm. him. But is yesterday a pretty good example of what he can be? Is you keep taking those shots, and maybe you don't hit three or four, but one can be a game-changing type of play with him? Yeah, that's what that's what we brought him in for, is to be able to provide that sort of spark and energy. Um, he's, he's incredibly fast and explosive, and so we're trying to find every which way we can to use that. Um, the best example is the is the touchdown you know, late in the game where all we needed was, was just something. We needed, we needed someone to make a, a big play for us, and um, Calvin did. And that's, that, to me, is the mark of, of what you want in your receivers is when, there's, when we got to turn the momentum and we need a huge play, he's, he's up to the task. And uh, he's, he's not afraid of any corner he's go, he goes against. He can beat anybody that lines up on him. Um, he's, been, he's been a really nice addition to our, to our offense, and um, I kind of love everything about what he does and how he does it. Oh, the, the burp shot. Mm -hmm. Was that a play designed specifically for Traylon to be running that route, or is that just kind of the receiver that was on the field? Situation? That was that was designed for um, Trey because we needed vertical speed and vertical lift to get that that part of the defense uh, lifted. And you got Calvin coming across on a high cross, so it's a true top down read where you're you're taking a peek, and if you got leverage on the on the pylon route, uh, which we did. Um, you can take a shot at it, and it's really just a its a top-down, three-level throw where we had Calvin on the high cross and we had uh, a player in the flat. And so uh, it's meant to be aggressive. It's meant to take a shot down the field. And um, we use Calvin's – or not Calvin, but Trey's speed um, to try to help make that third level very viable. And um, I thought it was. It looks as if Levis has was... had to a number of screen attempts this year. Is that accurate? Are you seeing anything in particular? Uh, I think we dirted two screens. Um, I called. I called. A, I called a lot of screens. I think I called six or seven screens yesterday, and all of them were relatively productive. Um, we had to dirt the one in Chicago on a third down. Uh, they were in a they were in a five man front, and the linebackers in the line of scrimmage, and it was a chip screen. And so he's going to chip the guy that's covering him. It wasn't great. Didn't work out. We didn't hit that one. Um, so we had to dirt that, and then the. Um, the screen that he dirted in the game was to – which one was that? Uh, we tried to get a play-action screen out the backside, and, and, and the nickel hang, just kind of was hanging back there. Um, played a lot tighter than we thought he was going to play. We thought he'd get more of a drop off the action. Um, we'd have a chance to get a body on him, but he played it pretty tight, and Will saw it and, and, and dirted it. So those are the two that, that I vividly remember. There might be one more. I, don't, I can't remember. but. I think our screen game has been pretty productive, and that's sort of the, the nature of screens. Sometimes you, you call six, seven of them, and you might have to dirt one, and that's sort of the cost of doing business on the screen game. They're not all going to look great. Um, but yeah, those, those two definitely are smart decisions by Will to dirt those. How was, Kenneth, how was Kenneth in coverage, especially on the touchdown? It looked like he was in position, but just a better throw and catch. That's the best way to put it. I think he's been. I think he's been everything we wanted him to be. Um, he's done a nice job in coverage. That's a that's a tough one on one against one of the better backs in football, um, both running and receiving. And he's shown that he can go catch like a receiver, much like Tony Pollard does. Um, and he was in great position. And Aaron Rodgers made a perfect throw. And I think he had about two or three of those in the game where we had guys in great position, and he just put the ball in a in a spot that Hall of Famers put the ball, and and those guys made plays on it. So. The positioning, the technique, what we're coaching was, was what he was supposed to do. And uh, guys make good throws and catches all the time, and that's just how it goes. So uh, happy with where he was and the positioning, but um, would love to see him come up with a PBU there, but, but ultimately we didn't. How would you kind of evaluate after maybe two weeks to a line run block versus first pass block? Yeah, I think generally speaking, I think the run game is something we've, we've taken pride in. And I think 
you know, especially last week, that first half, we had some great runs. And I think this game, we had a few good runs. Um, but I, I definitely say it's probably ahead of where we are in terms of pass blocking right now. Um, pass blocking is harder, just a fact of offensive line play. Um, but you got to continue to get better at that. I think we worked a lot on that this week. And I think there are some improvements there, but obviously plenty of work to do in that department. What's a reasonable expectation for the week to week growth in pass protection? It's sort of hard to quantify that, I think. Um, but is you know, is you just want to see guys start working techniques more and, and kind of really executing those techniques more week by week. Um, it's a difficult league. We've played some good edge rushers, played some good interior guys. Um, so it's not always going to be 100% perfect every week. Um, but just growth and, and then better execution of techniques. Is the, what's been the bigger problem up front in pass pro right now? Communication or just one-on-one -on -one battles? Um, I don't think communication has really been that big of an issue. Um, obviously, one-on-ones is, is pretty tough. That's a hard, you know, it's why, it's why the NFL is hard and there's a lot of talented defensive linemen out there. Um, so I, I imagine there'd be more so that than communication. Is catching some some strays out there right now. I mean, there's, there's people going after him. Is, is you as an offensive line, how much do you take it on yourself to to pick your quarterback up and help him out? I think you always do. I think that's kind of what we, your identity needs to be as an offensive line, as a protector of your quarterback and not letting him take hits and giving him the time he needs to make the plays he needs to do. And um, we've got to be better at that. And you know, I think these first two weeks we've probably not complete that and not giving Will a chance to make the plays he need and not put him in positions, um, you know, in riskier positions. So um, it's got to be better. When you talk about improving techniques, are, are there specific ones that, that you can single out of things that these guys need to be doing better? It's hard to, um, just because everyone's different. All five guys are different and what they need and what they've seen. And there's so many different techniques. You know, I think for me, it's more so sets and footwork. Um, you know, some of the guys might be hands or angles, stuff like that. So um, difficult to really say like one thing because um, everyone's different and everyone's, you know, has different reps. How different has it been going from what you guys have done or what you did last year under one coaching staff to now doing things the way Bill wants them done? How, how much change has there been involved for you guys? I'd say it's definitely been different. Um, I would not, I mean, I think we learned a whole lot of new techniques and almost a whole new system pretty much. Um, just a protection system, also a technique system. So guys are still adjusting that and learning that. I think everyone's worked hard at that, you know, throughout camp in these first two weeks. Um, but, you know, I don't think it's everyone's 100% clicked yet. You know, I think we're still learning and especially once you get these live in-game reps, you know, that intensity goes up way more and it's, it's even harder to work those, but, um, I think everyone's just going to keep working harder to get those techniques down. What's he, what's he like on Monday, day after uh, Bill, as far as making corrections, you know, not being upset about things, but trying to get his point across? Yeah, I mean, he throughout, you know, pre, you know, the spring and camp and everything, you know, he he tells it like it is in meetings, and um, if you do bad, he tells you you do bad, and if, when you do well, he tells you that too. So. Um, you know, obviously games we lose, obviously there's probably more bad than good, and he's not going to pull any punches with that. And um, we all know it's because he wants us to get better, and that's the way it is. What's his temperament in the delivery of that message on, on these two Mondays? I'd say he's never really too overly angry or emotional, but he'll get after you and um, he'll get on you because he knows we're all capable of more and capable of doing better. Um, but I, he's not, you know, over the top, red in the face, you know, screaming at anybody, but he definitely gets on us. So they're not they're not easy meetings. As you guys are trying to figure out those techniques, and maybe <laughs> what technique is best for each individual guy to make a play flow how it should. What's that give and take like between you guys and the coaching staff? Is it tape? Is it a feeling thing? Um, input from from players? Obviously, it starts with tape and seeing what you're doing wrong. Um, and then a lot, is, a lot of it is in practice and practice reps. Um, so like we do a lot of work with those techniques pre-practice and individual. And then, OK, now are you executing in the team reps in practice? And then see how it goes during the, during the, during the game, too. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard. To, it's a lot of work during the week, a lot of talking during the week, a lot of watching tape of other guys um, that Bill's coached that have done it well um, and, and learning from them, which I think has benefited me. Um, but yeah, it's it's a whole process, and it, it continues week to week. There's always there's always gonna be something you can work on, even when you're protecting really well. 
Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it, it's sort of a, a process throughout. I mean, personally, like you came back like noticeably bigger. Have you found yourself having to kind of work a little bit more to get your footwork where once where you needed to be? Um, I wouldn't say that. Um, I'd say that first week it was just me sort of not more so me not trusting myself and and doing that. I feel like. Yeah, yesterday I got back to that a little bit more, which which I was happy with. Um, obviously, there's still plenty plenty to improve on there. I don't think the my size is really having anything to do with that. It was more so a mental thing um, that I've just been working through. And um, no, I don't think the size was really related to that. Well, what is that mental thing? What is it that you're not trusting, or that you didn't trust? Um, I think it was really just some some technique things that I needed to adjust to, and I just for whatever reason, wasn't adjusting to the environment or situation and um, the, you know, whatever the defense presented me. And um, I think I did a better job of that this week. But, um, yeah, it was more of an environmental thing, I think, just not going with that. In both games, it's, it's certainly felt mm -hmm. like the offensive line's kind of faded down the stretch of the game. Do you think that's a fair evaluation? And what do you think has gone into that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we've had so many three and outs in the second halves of both games. Um, that's never a good thing as an offensive line. You know, obviously not getting the runs you want to get going and then not being able to execute on third down and some of those more pass downs. And so that's probably not an unfair assessment given given the results. Um, I haven't had a real chance to really analyze the tape from yesterday yet. But um, yeah, it's certainly been that way. And that's not how we want to be as a unit. You guys are 0 2. Rams, Ravens, Bengals are 0 2. What's the key to, to not freaking out and panicking at this point? It's a long season. Um, we've got plenty of opportunities left. Um, obviously, you need the. Obviously, you want to. We should have won those games, both of them, and not happy about that. But um, you know, it's still September, and we can't be. You know, can't be pulling any fire alarms here or anything and panicking and stuff like that. So, just got to keep going and trust in our process. Um, but there's no point in, in September hanging your head and saying, oh, "Well, whatever." You know, it's a long year. We're gonna have opportunities to get back. Does it make it any easier to stomach those losses? Like you said, good chance you could have won both games. Does that make it any easier than opposed to a couple of blowout losses? I'd say probably more frustrating in that sense. You know, knowing that those wins were really possible and you didn't get them. Um, the, yeah, I'd say there's definitely been a lot of frustration about that because we had, you know, it could, it could have easily been 2 and 0. We weren't because of the stuff we did. So um, it's hard to imagine, you know, having blowout losses like that. I'm sure it wouldn't be much better, but. Certainly, no lack of frustration with those two those well, two games. What was what was your I guess room like as a kid? Did you have Packer stuff all over it. Um, yeah. What, yeah. How many games did you go to at Lambeau? As a, as a I'd kid? say I probably used to go to like one a year, roughly. Cool for you to be going up against them now, and what, what would that be like for yeah, you? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, obviously, I was a you know diehard fan for most of my life, um, so it. It'll be a little bit weird, but now I feel like I've sort of distanced myself from them now that I'm out on another NFL team and enjoying it here. So no no less motivation than any other team to win. Um, obviously, being known to, we want to win badly. So certainly no no issue there. But obviously, kind of cool. You know, I have a lot of family come to that game since, you know, they always, they've always been Packers fans too. Um, but no, I, I think just as motivated to win in this game and probably even more motivated, but, but definitely cool in that sense. Or being a Packers fan growing up in Chicago? Not really. They're usually always better than the Bears, so <laughs> um, that wasn't too much of an issue. <laughs> Peter, when you look at the, the numbers of pressures the offensive line has allowed up to this point, what, what's the biggest thing moving forward to kind of limit that? Um, I would say getting out of situations where you know, the D line really gets to tee off and rush on you and, you know, send pressure. And that's those third and longs, you know, third and, third and eight plus, stuff like that. I think that's really where you really let the defense be in their comfort zone um, and it allows rushers kind of, you know, kind of tee off on you and get after you. And we want to be out of that and want to be efficient on those first and second downs. And that'll get us out of those kind of those hairy situations where now the defense gets to get after us. Have you noticed, is there a disparity between the amount of time that pressure comes on the interior versus the outside? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I've noticed that. No, I, I can't think off the top of my head. On a different note, you're speaking of Packers, did you see Malik's day yesterday? And what do you think about that? I saw a little bit of it. Um, obviously, I love Malik. He's a great guy. And i um, always happy to see him, see him do well. Obviously, we're still trying to win on Sunday. And so 
that uh, that's a bit of a conflict. But obviously, we're trying to win. But he's a great guy. Um, always be a friend of mine, and always happy for him. But yeah, I know you said it's no time to panic. But at zero and two, with the team coming in to your field with their backup quarterback, I mean, the pressure kind of builds to win. Yeah, I'd say the 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 job and our process stays the same. Um, you know, if you're one of those teams who really reacts to the highs and the lows of the season, you're probably not going to be a very good team, in my opinion. I think your process always has to be the same and your process to win the game. Um, for us, I've got a great defense, and the challenge is there no matter what. And it would be the same challenge if we were 2-0, if we were 0-2. Um, so yeah, we're not, in terms of our process and our preparation, I don't think, yeah, there's definitely an intensity to it. Um, but we're not going to like super, super overreact and do some crazy stuff during the week that we've never done because of that. You know, we've got to attack it the same way and with an intensity. But yeah, how frustrating is it? You know, two games. The focus is so much on creating turnovers. You guys haven't gotten it. Um, you know, it's frustrating for sure. Obviously, losing leaves a bad taste in everybody's mouth, and um, especially to the standard that we're trying to uh, build here. Um, but you know, it's very early in the season, and we know there's a lot of opportunities still left out there. What would you say is missing from you know being able to generate those takeaways that you value? Um, you never know. Um, you know, there could be a multitude of things. Obviously, we could drill it more. We could talk about it more. Um, obviously, you know, stripping at the ball, doing things like that. Um, but we know, you know, we're getting in the backfield. We're, we're we're making the quarterback uncomfortable with our front seven. So um, yeah, I think the opportunities are there. We just got to capitalize. The plight of Mike Williams on, on the last drive seemed like you're in great position, and there wasn't much more. You can do is that is that kind of a hopeless play for you? Oh no, there's always more you can do. You know, I'm looking at myself. You know, things about leverage. Um, you know, anticipating certain things. Um, and that's a player I definitely would, would like back. I think that I could have definitely made that play. Even got my head around and made a play on the ball. So, um, yeah, I definitely want that play back. What's the key to not panicking at this point? I mean, it's early in the season. It's not even. <laughs> what, it's a 17-game season. They gave us extra games, only two games in. So there's no point to panic. They ain't going to help me anything. With, with the Packers coming to town and having already you, you saw Malik here for, for months, how much of a help is that for you guys? Uh, it helps a little bit. Obviously, it's a different system. You know, um, he's, he's a player that we know. But at the same time, he's in a different system. So um, you know, they're coming off a win as well. So uh, you know, there's a lot of things out there that you know, we've got to treat him like you know, he's a great quarterback, and he is, you know, a really, a really good quarterback. So, uh, you know, the challenges has been there the first two weeks for us, and, you know, we haven't been able to capitalize. So th this week we'll definitely be looking forward to capitalizing. Do you feel like you guys have had opportunities for takeaways and it just hasn't happened? Uh, for sure. You've been through these 0-2 starts the last couple of years elsewhere. Just do you say something to your teammates about that, about the experience of been through this? Um, I don't think you necessarily need to say something. Obviously, it would be nice to say something to like you know maybe the DB group, and then it trickles down to everybody else. But at the same time, it's like um, you know can't, you can't panic. You know what I'm saying? Like we trust the process. You got to trust the habits that we built here, our winning habits. And you know if we do have any losing habits, this is the time to kind of like cut down on you know the distractions and everything else. Kind of just lock in on getting this first win um, on the season. How do you identify losing habits at this point? Um, it's kind of I want to say. It's hard to identify. I would say anything that's taken away from our goal, anything, anything that's taken away from our mission, you know, that, that can materialize in everybody's life differently. You know, maybe someone's, you know, <laughs> girlfriend's taking time away, I don't know, or video games, whatever it could be, you know, it's like, okay, maybe spend the extra time, uh, you know, watching film. I'm not saying that's happening, but, you know, if it happens in anybody's individual life, you know, just, you know, the extra 30 minutes, extra hour, wherever it, wherever it is, let's, let's find it, let's take advantage of it, and let's get better. You guys are number one overall defense right now, and I think over number one in pass defense, too. Can you, can you take some things from that despite the, the 0 and 2 start? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, a good sign that we're turning in the right direction. Again, it's early season, so um, a lot of these things will change, and, you know, all that matters is being the last team standing. You know what I'm saying? The, the best defense is the defense that is the last defense plan and, and is hosting up that tro trophy. So um, stats and everything is cool, and it's um, it could be a nice pat on the back, but we can't take any pets on the back right now. We just got to get a win. You kind of touched on Malik. He, he knows this team. You guys obviously know him from being around. How does that all shake out when it comes time for prepping and playing? Is there somebody having an advantage? 
Um, it's going to be a great fair match. You know, he's went against the defense all camp. You know, we've went against him all camp. So there's things that we've seen in him. There's things that he's seen in us. And um, at the end of the day, in a match like that, you know, it's the best man wins. So uh, we'll be looking forward to be the best man. What do you think stands out for his skill set in, in the time that you saw him? He's very studious. Um, very studious, uh, student of the game, um, very calm under pressure. Doesn't seem like he get lets anything get to him. You know, very focused, driven. Um, I haven't been here years past, but just looking at him from the years past to this year, he looked a, a lot more calm um, in, in his decision making and was very accurate. So um, I think he's a really good quarterback, and you know, we, we want to go against good quarterbacks. Cheeto, is there a challenge when statistically you guys have played winning football on the defensive side, but you're sitting here at 0-2? Mm -hmm. Is there a challenge to keep doing what you've been doing and assume that it'll be good enough versus, hey, we got to do more, we got to press to do even more than this, and how do you balance that? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say the common thing usually is like, oh, we have to do more, we have to do more, but I, I, I'm more of a fan of just staying on track. You know what I'm saying? Like. Um, if we have winning habits, which I believe we do, you know, it's just keep continuing to be us. And sometimes the game falls your way, sometimes it doesn't. But I think if you continue to, you know, exemplify winning habits, the game's going to fall into your favor more often than it does not. So um, there's a little bit of doing more, but at the same time, it's like we can't throw away everything that we've been doing. It's only two games in, and um, I feel like we're, we're right on the brink of success. How do you think Ernest has kind of stepped in, gotten up to speed, and what was it like being on the field with him so much? I mean, that was, yeah, that was fun. You know, seeing him making some plays and then celebrating. You know, I love when people celebrate, you know, tackles, third down stops, everything. It kind of gets us as a defense going. So, you know, he was definitely one of those spark plugs uh, yesterday that just, you know, he brought the – he made some, a lot of great plays, and then, you know, we fed off his energy.